Psalm 91 is my favorite psalm. Psalm 91 is full of promises. And verse 7 says, A thousand will fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. What a promise. What a promise from God to his people. Raise your hand if you are part of his people. If you are not his people, don't raise your hand. Raise your hand, praise God, if you are his people. Don't, one of the things that we're going to get rid of is our being timid. The devil wants you to be timid because if you are timid, you're not aggressive enough. You're not aggressive enough to appropriate what is yours. You enter like, uh, like if you are afraid to enter. No, when, it's your, when you enter your house, you don't open the door and you go like this. You enter, it's yours. Timid people will not achieve in the kingdom of God and the devil will steal from you all you have even though legal is yours. So these are the things that we have to, in the times we're living in, that is going to become worse very probably. That means that we really have to know what is ours. And walk in the conscious, consciousness. Or if this is mine, there is no devil that will take from me what belongs to me. Give yourself a hand. Praise God. So, that means we got to enter more than ever. How do we receive? By believing. Believing, how? believing is equal to faith. Faith. We're really going to have to activate basic studies in faith. Because you need to have it. Faith is your hands, your arms, which you receive what God has. That's what you appropriate. Faith. So your hands better be, your, your spiritual hands better be strong and firm. And you cannot be timid or afraid what is yours, is yours, and no devil can take it from you. You know, you have to be conscious and realize who you are. You are now, you have received the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been adopted in the family. Therefore, you're a child of the living God. Then you're going to have to look in, start looking at yourself different than what you have looked at yourself up to now. You see, we have received the Lord, and we have the mentality, we are saved. Yeah, we are saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. No, no. Saved from everything that is not of God. You hear? You are more than just not going to hell. You are saved from every maneuver, every area that the devil has, any trap that the devil may have for you on this earth. You're going to have to walk realizing who you are and recognizing the angels that surround you. you got to read Psalm 91. Some of you read it 20 times a day. At least like a medicine, two or three times a day. I say 20 times a day because some of you really are in problem. <laughs> so, read Psalm 21. That's, that, 91, that's, that's my favorite psalm. Because of the amount of promises. But then you may know the promises. But now you're going to have to believe them. This is the second portion. Because you may know them and means nothing. It's just like you know that Christopher Columbus discovered America. So what? You continue being your same life. Even though you have that information. Now is to have uh, the revelation of that information. That makes you see different. And make you act different. And make you receive different. Praise. Say, praise God. Say, that's for me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Aggressive. Let me go to uh, Romans 10. Romans 10, verse 7. Romans 10, verse 7. Romans 
Roman, Roman. Why am I doing Mark? I said Roman. Have you ever made a mistake? This is the first mistake I'm making in my life. <laughs> Romans, Romans. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 7. And he says, Who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word. This is the word. Okay? This is the word of God. The word of God means his desires and his information and his guidance and his direction. This is his desires for you. Say the word. All right. The word is nigh thee, near you. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So he says that this word has to be in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Why is it important? Because it's the word of faith that is going to make you achieve, grasp, take Make yours what God has for you. So you better have the word of faith in the right place. How do I develop the word of faith? Having it in my mouth and in my heart. So some of you have the word of faith in your heart. That means you believe right. But you speak wrong. Because it ain't in your mouth. This is so important. So important. You see, for example, the word of faith, it says in Romans that you are more than a conqueror. That means that you will conquer. But the truth is, well, not the truth, the reality in the natural that we call truth shows that you have never conquered anything. Therefore, now you have an inclination to speak the natural realities. But the spiritual reality says that you are more than a conqueror. Do you understand the difference now? So you can have that information and believe right, but you're speaking wrong. You are declaring and saying against what God is saying. Therefore, faith is not there. You will not conquer in other words, you will continue not conquering like it has been all your life because you are now not realizing who you are now after you receive Christ. Now you look at yourself like you were before, a defeated person. Do you follow what I'm saying? The Word of God that shows you you're a conqueror and shows you whatever else is there that is for you has to be not only in your heart, has to be in your heart and in your mouth. So you say, I believe, right? I do this. But what, about, what, what are you saying? What are you saying about yourself? You see, Proverbs 27 says, according to how a man thinks of himself, so is he. How do you think of yourself? Of course, we have been trained to think of ourselves according to what we've been taught and according to the experiences we have had in our lives. It's like a computer. Your mind receives your information or how you've been taught and your experiences when you were a child. If you were rejected when you were a child, if you never knew your mother, if you were raped when you were a kid, and all those ex information, when you went to school, they made fun of you because you wore glasses, because you were cross-eyed, I don't know, whatever it may be. That information that is there will make you think of yourself as those experiences will tell you to think of yourself. But now, you, when you receive Jesus, the book of Colossians says that I've been transferred transported 
translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. I'm a new creature. I'm a new person. I'm going to have to start looking at myself like God says I am and not like I used to be. That ain't easy. That ain't easy, but if you want to go to the next level and you want to achieve and you want to raise, maybe for the first time in your life, the, 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 the flag of victory, you better start thinking of yourself like God is telling you how to think of yourself. There's more. You don't even know who you, We don't even know who we are yet. We are more than we could even think being a child of the living God. Raise your hand toward heaven. Raise your hand toward heaven and give, give God thanks. Praise God. Give God thanks for what he has done for you and what he's doing for you. And realize that there's a change that's going to take place. So you may believe right and speak wrong. You want to achieve an enter new level. Some of you need to get out of the hole you're in. You need to. You see, you see your words are like a missile, a projectile. Is a, your words create a vibration. You have power in your words. Your words create a vibration. A vibration that when it hits, it's um, start opening doors for that vibration to create a manifestation. A manifestation of what? A manifestation of what you have in your heart. And what do you have in your heart? The Word of God. Because you believe right, now you're going to have to speak right for it to manifest. Do you follow what I'm saying? The manifestation is not what you have in your heart. The manifestation are the words that are projected from your mouth of what you have in your heart. And when that word is thrown out there, when your heart believing what God says, remember, what you have in your heart is not what you will just imagine. You are putting in your heart what God is saying about you. So that's the word of God. The word is in your mouth and in your, and in your heart. So in your heart is that word. Now, it has to be projected out into the natural for it to manifest that which is in your heart. In this case, Example I place, you are more than a conqueror. You are supposed to conquer. Conquer what? Well, I don't know. Maybe you need to conquer your business. You're in a new business. Maybe you need to conquer your wife. Maybe you need to conquer your husband. Maybe it's your child. Maybe you have family problem. I don't know. Maybe you have to conquer your own uh, complexes that you have. You understand? Maybe you got to conquer your drugs. You're smoking. You're a drunkard. I don't know what you are, that you already know you are wrong. But you know what? Even though it looks terrible, because you have never conquered anything, and everything has conquered you. Now, the Jesus that is in your heart is telling you through his word that you are the one that is more than a conqueror. Can you look at yourself different than what you have looked at yourself up to now? Maybe you're a young person. Maybe in school you always take, maybe you always get F's and D's once in a while. But you see, maybe your parents, even though they love you, they have spoken terrible things upon your life. Son, how stupid you are. <laughs> you continue getting D's and F. You'll never get to be nothing. You never do this. You never do that. Blah, 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 blah. Then the, you, the, your uncle got to your house. How are you doing in school? You didn't want to tell him. Then your mother said, oh, the same. I don't know what we're going to do with the child. So you are growing, accepting that you are a defeated. You're a defeated, I was going to say warrior, but you're not even a warrior. You're just a defeated person. So you're going to have to change that because now Jesus is in you. And Jesus is saying something different. I say that Jesus is saying, are you listening to me back there? I say that Jesus is saying something different. Are you listening to me over there and the, whatever you're seeing me through? Hey, the past is gone. 
Now you are in Jesus Christ. And you must enter the doors that is opening for your life. And you are, everybody say, I am what God said I am. And I have what God said I have. Give yourself a hand. You cannot allow your past to rule you and to direct your future. Listen to what I'm saying. You cannot permit your past to rule you and direct your future. No. Who's going to rule you and direct your future? God's word. That you're going to get it and put it in your heart and then you're going to make it manifest as you project it out of your mouth. Praise God, I'm telling you. You see, the thing is that your faith is not yours, it's God's. Since your faith is God's, you got to operate faith like God operates your faith. My God, this is so powerful. I've got to be going soon. Now, this is tremendous. Say, this is tremendous. Even if you don't think so, you say it. Praise God. But look, look at Romans 12. Woo! Woo! Romans 12. I get in there. Listen to this. 3, 12, 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. What faith? His faith. And he says, don't let every man think more than he ought to think of himself. Why does he say that? Because when you get to know how, God, how this works, you're going to start achieving. You're going, to, you start, you're going to start conquering. You're going to start having. You're going to change the way you look at yourself. And then God is saying here, hey, don't think, don't think more than you, you think of yourself. Remember everything you have because I've given it to you. Be humble. Because this message could give uh, people the wrong feeling. Because it appears that what I'm talking is in a very arrogant position. But I'm not being arrogant. I'm just being sure that whatever God says is true for me. Now, I may be single out. I'm an arrogant preacher. But I don't care what you think. I know in my heart what God thinks. And when you start thinking like me, you will see how I think. <laughs> you understand what I mean? That is the way it is. Because there is, a, there is a very, of course, of course, there is a very delicate line between pride and being sure. Walk in a security of yourself. So you could be, they could misplace you, they misread you. But you, that's why the Bible says, hey, be sure that you realize that everything you're achieving is because God is saying, I taught it to you. Everything you have is because I have given you. Even your salvation, everything I have given you. So keep humble. Keep humble. Why? Because of the measure of faith that I have dealt you and you've been able to put it to practice. You follow what I'm saying. The point I wanted to get here is the measure of faith that God has given us. So since, his, since it is his faith and not ours, we have to operate the faith in the same manner he operates his faith. Is that simple? And now, how does he operate his faith? Well, wow. Well, if we go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, this is the book of origins. 
Verse 3 says, And God said, God said, And God, say said, said, And God said, Let there, let, let there be light. And there was light. And he continued. And God said, And there was. And God said, And there was. What I want you to realize, That God made the universe through his words. Because he had faith. He, he had in his heart how light looked like. And he projected it. And when he said, let it be light, he knew what light was. Because he had in his heart what light was. And light was. Now, that is his faith. He's giving you and me a measure of that faith. How am I going to operate it? He's teaching me. That's why he says there in Romans that the word that develops the faith has to be in my mouth and in my heart. Both places. If it's not in both places, if it's not in heart, forget it. Because in the heart is the root. is where the seed goes. <laughs> That's another teaching where the seed goes. But now, what is there, you projected it. You operate the faith just like your father projected. He's your father, you know, and you're an heir. You have total right to use what he uses because he's your father. He's your father. You're going to have to look at yourself different. But if you don't look at yourself different, you still have that religious inclination. You will not enter because you'll be timid. I don't deserve it. Of course you don't deserve it. But he has chosen you anyway. I always give the same example of my son and my daughter when they were little. You know? I used to say, well, when I come back, I'm going to bring some chocolates. If you behave, I give it to you. If you don't, I won't give it to you. So I came a few hours later with my chocolates. I asked, how did they behave? Well... Veronica behaved well, but Albert, terrible, terrible. Say, Albert, go to your room. Veronica, here's the chocolate. You go to your room. He doesn't deserve it. But then I went to his room. He cried. Say, I will not do it again. Are you sure? I said, listen, don't do it again. But I believe you're repented. You're going to mend here. You see, he didn't deserve it. But I gave it to him anyway. Do you think, do you think that he's going to say, Dad, I don't deserve it. I don't want it. Are you crazy? <laughs> he knew he didn't deserve it. But he accepts it. You know why I gave it to him? First, because I love him. And second, because I see that he really Wants to mend it and wants to change that. So what I mean to say is that I know you don't deserve it. But then why do you act? That you're pushing, you're giving God back what he wants to give you. Whenever you say I don't deserve it, you are rejecting what God is giving you. Even though you don't deserve it, but he loves you. But since you are rejecting it, you cannot eat the candy, baby. You cannot say that you are more than a conqueror. You will continue to lose You will continue to be rejected. You will continue with your weird thoughts. You will continue seeing yourself like nobody, like you're a second nature. You will continue being that everybody rejects you. Why? Do you, well, they reject me because I'm black. They reject me because I am short. They reject me because I'm poor. They reject me because I got cross eye. You, that is in your mind. You are rejected. Because you need to know that you're a child of the living God. When you know you're a child of the living God and you accept that you don't deserve it, but you got his blessings, nothing can stop you. Praise God. I don't care what you are. <laughs> Woo! Are you following me? So, the same way that God operates his faith, you got to operate it. 
Now let me go here. I got to go here to finish because it's powerful. It's powerful. My God, and I say, I want you to see. I'm going to finish with this. I want you to see how God uses his words full of faith. Well, we already saw in Genesis how he made the worlds. But I want you to see the teaching that was the practical part. The teaching. This is God speaking through the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. And God is saying, 5511, Isaiah. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. My God. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? I'm going to read it again because I don't know. I, would, I was asking, thinking another reaction from you, but I, uh, come on, look at this. You should, you should be happy to hear this because this is the faith you have. And I'm telling you, if you use it like he used it, it will produce to you what you want to achieve and acquire. This is to make a party. This is to celebrate. I will read again. God says, So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Get on your feet. Get on your feet and give God thanks. For the faith that is in your heart. And now, faith is in you because the word is in your heart and also is in your mouth. You believe right and you project right. Give the Lord another panel of applause. Come on, come on, come on.